hi YouTube family Paul here Paul Phillips fix uh, thank you for joining me today uh, today I'm doing the rear brakes and rotors on a, uh, a 2001 e430 Mercedes formatic that's the uh, w210 platform so this would be the same for any w210 platform uh, I want to cover some basic stuff so I've had comments uh, put online let me put this on my head about people wanting me to get into more detail uh i gotta take into account that there are people who are not familiar to working on their cars so i'd like to introduce them to the basics so they're capable to do this all right uh on this i have 17 millimeter lug nuts and in the back of the brake calibers right back here i have two 16 millimeter bolts to remove the whole caliper I heard a couple of other people mention they had 19 millimeter on their car. This car has 16s on them. Uh, just for reference sake, when you are putting the lug nuts back on, they are torqued to 85 foot pounds. And the uh, caliber bolts are 35 newton meters or 28.6 foot pounds, I believe. I usually go by feel. I've worked on cars a lot and I kind of know what that bolt's going to call forward the talk. Usually I'm pretty close with that. All right. As far as jacking goes, uh, just a little tip. Uh, I like to use a hockey puck as a jack pad for my jack. That way I don't tear up my jacking pads or my underbody to paint. So just keep in mind a hockey puck works well. They're pretty tough. Uh, right here, I got under the rear differential in the center. I jacked it up then on the side here you'll see little squares right beneath here and in about two inches are plastic type uh jack uh pads for you to put the uh jack uh supports on okay make sure you do not work on it just on the jacks uh before you jack it up you might want to break your lug nuts free if you don't have an impact like i have because they may have been over tightened a lot of these garages just throw stuff on with impact guns and over tighten the lug nuts and uh then they wind up getting snapped off or they warp your rotors to hell uh so you're going to need the 17 millimeter socket for your lug nuts a 16 or a 19 mil for the caliber bolts if you're doing the rotors uh you're going to probably need a pair of pliers a screwdriver to pry the pads open to depress the caliber again and a hammer and some kind of punch to uh get these pins out that retain the uh brake pads in here for my job i got a set of hella pajid rotors they look really well made i'm gonna stick with these from now on i used to go with power stop but uh these are high carbon from Germany and they really look well machined and the, the casting is beautiful. They're nice and clean in the vented area. A lot of times you see a real rough job on that. These look like they were well made. Uh, for my pads, I'm going with uh, Power Stop Ceramics uh, Z something formula. I'll tell you that when I get them. I can't remember the number off of the top of my head. All right, I will be removing this caliber, but first I'm just going to pull the pads out. For anybody who just wants to do pads on our car there's two pins that go through here you can see the little tits sticking out a little bit you have to hammer them back in to the inside of the direction of the car then this hardware here will come out I don't want to mushroom them I think these have been in here for a while maybe I should have got new pins huh They're moving. They're getting beat up, but they're moving. I did put PB Blaster on my bleeder. I'm not gonna bleed them out today, but eventually, over the weekend, I hope I'm going to uh, empty my master cylinder reservoir and bleed my whole brake system. I like to do it about every three years. I just got this car not too long ago for 300 bucks. It was a basket case, but I got her back on the road and it's running pretty nice, except for this right rear caliber. 
I mean, the uh, rotor is really chewed up. I, it feels like there's a gouge out of it. Might be on the backside. I've looked at them and can't see anything without removing it. So I'm gonna find out what's going on today. These are being stubborn. I think these have been on here for a while. Just get it below there. Come on, you. I've been saying the dirty word when it comes to working on cars. I always say, oh, that's going to be an easy job, and usually I regret that. Rust and stuff has a way. of making things a little more complicated. I live in the salt belt, so this car is from the salt belt. Right, I wish I had a big nail that I could drive through there further. I'm gonna see if I can get a nice size nail. See if I can pull them out. I don't think they're gonna come out that easy. I'll try it with a plier though. I got a vice grip actually. There they go, they're coming out. Well, one's coming out anyway look like they got a square tip on them this is the first time I am doing brakes on one of these I believe this goes in here this way. I gotta look at the other side to see which way this retainer clip goes in there. The brake pads I bought came with new hardware, which I like to do when I do brakes. I like to have new hardware put in. Now it looked like I lost a little ring that came with this pin. I did. There it is. There's that little collar on there. Oh, I guess that gets pried in there and retains it in when you drive it back in. That's what holds it in. It's that little split ring that helps to retain them in there. These rings are a little, I mean, these pins are a little beat up looking. They could have used replacing, but I'm not going to stop doing this now because of that. I can always throw them in another time. It's not a major hassle, you know? gonna need some kind of zip tie a bungee cord or a piece of hanger or something to hang your caliper on when you take that off you don't want to let that hang on the brake line you can damage the brake hose uh, this is a good time to inspect your brake hoses take a look at your springs make sure they're not cracked or anything you can look at your okay this is being stubborn I tried getting on this with a big set of channel locks and depressing that piston and it didn't look like it wanted to move. We're gonna see if I can possibly wiggle this caliper off. I'm having a funny feeling that I might not have much luck right here. I'm hoping I don't have to replace the calipers on here. This car set, I think, for damn near a year. When I got it, the brakes were frozen up. Had to tow it on a uh, trailer with a come along. millimeter bolts I was telling you about that some people said they're 19 I'm gonna try getting here prying this out 
pride at other piston in. I cracked my uh, master cylinder cap a little bit so air could get out of there while I'm trying to depress this. It might have moved a little bit. That's not good. They should not be this hard to depress. It's supposed to go back in easier than that. Yeah, I got that big lip here I can't get over. Figure out a way I can pry on this side. Pulling this way, I'm trying to depress this cylinder. I want to try to depress this one. wiggling it from side to side to try to push those pistons in. Yeah, those pistons are being stubborn. They don't want to move. These brakes look like they're on here pretty solid too. These pads. These rear brakes might be all frozen up. Could be the pads that are frozen on here and that's why I can't depress it. Be careful not to rip that boot on the uh, piston. Be mindful of that while I'm doing this. Putting this back on here to just hold it so I got a little leverage trying to move those pads a little bit. This is not supposed to be this complicated. It's supposed to pop right out, but what's supposed to be in reality are two different things, right? It looks like they rusted some and swelled up. That's what it jammed in here. going back in so that's good news the 
these are supposed to slide right out of here. I was going to just throw rotors on here because I saw there was a lot of meat left on the pads, but then I decided cheap usually winds up being expensive. I didn't know what kind of shape the inner pad was in on the other side, the one that's giving me all the noise and vibration. So I figured, stop trying to save a buck and do it the right way. Every time I've tried to take shortcuts, it's bitten, bitten me in the ass, so. Brake pads aren't that much, and brakes are important. I don't play with brakes. Here we go, that's one out. They did have a lot of meat on them still. They look like they may be bimetal, partial metallic pads. I like running ceramic myself. Once again, I'm gonna take advantage of that pad being jammed in there to depress that piston pistons going in good I'm glad that's good news I don't want to throw any more money into this car I want to drive it I don't like twisting this line too much These are supposed to be one of the easiest cars to do brakes on. My buddy's got a Saturn and it's got Mercedes brakes on it. And he was amazed. He said he never did a brake job that was that easy before in his life. All right, hang your caliper up here so you don't strain the brake line. If I can get this wire to stay here like it's supposed to. go right, one thing I wanted to mention if you're doing your Mercedes uh, you don't need to go with Mercedes brake fluid you can get any dot four brake fluid will be fine if it's a w210 these are the power stop evolution plus ceramic disc pads I've been using these a long time I'm very happy with their performance I've never had a noise from them they don't get my wheels so filthy uh, this is a z17 evolution plus ceramic uh, brake pad set I threw a different set on my truck that I found a good deal on money wise and never again with cheap brake pads not worth it things stops horribly all right that if you don't have new hardware that uh, little clip that came out that was on top of the big one that goes across these are actually one piece this came with the new hardware I, re I recommend replacing the hardware when you do do your brakes now, where do they just put that tool that I went to get? Oh, great. All right, there it is. I got a five millimeter Allen. Uh, nothing I mentioned with tools is getting sponsored by anybody, but I just want to give a uh, good review on this. Pittsburgh from Harbor Freight, the longer handle swivel head ratchet. I got a set of one of these in each size. It's nice to have that little bit of extra torque. Make sure you sink that in all the way so you don't strip it out. Sometimes debris will get in there. These don't have to be crazy tight, so just snug it back up when you put it in. All it does is hold that rotor on. You could run the car without this in there. It's not gonna be a catastrophe because the lugs would hold the uh, rotor in place, but I like to put things back the way they're supposed to be. Now, sometimes these get frozen on here. The other day, I sprayed some uh, PB Blaster in here. I also hit my bleeder, my bleeders with some PB Blaster. I'm gonna put some more on there, so I don't wanna snap them off when I go to flush my brake system out. 
and get a little more, more of that PB blaster. I like this stuff. You can make a homemade brew with acetone and automatic transmission fluid. I've used that to free up the spare tire release on my truck and it worked excellent. I think it's better than any of the marketed stuff. Get that bleeder again. So it's a good idea to have a hammer around. Yeah, this feels like it's pretty frozen on there. I'm gonna get a lump hammer and give it a whack. care if I damage the rotor because I'm replacing them no need for you to remove it if you're not replacing them so just to move all right now I gotta rotate this to about 10 o'clock I think that's the hole right there around 10 o'clock and take a smaller screwdriver and crank back that star adjuster to release your parking brake that'll hold the rotor on that was frozen on that's not what was holding it on but now it's what's holding it on i believe i have to go in the upward direction i'm not sure but i'll find out get a little bigger screwdriver than that Let me go get a flashlight so I'm not taking shots in the dark here so I can see where I'm at. I am looking in there and I don't see the star adjuster anywhere. Feel it in any one of these holes. I wonder if I have a different setup. I looked at some reference material. It said at around 10 o'clock there's supposed to be access hole for the uh, star adjuster. I'm not feeling this here. Let me look around the back and see if there's a way to do it from the back side. I doubt it. American cars have an access hole on the back dust plate where you can get to it. I don't see anywhere in the back to access it. Okay, what I just did was put that little retainer screw back in. And I'm going to rotate it around and see if I can find the star adjuster. The inner part was rotating with the uh, rotor. So I wasn't winding up on the star adjuster. Here's a spring. Another spring. 
looking in the other holes while I'm at it. When you put this back together, you're gonna have to readjust this to where it's just touching. There it is. It's up at the right. It is at about 10 o'clock. I see it right there. I don't know if you guys can catch this on camera. There's a star adjuster right there. Now I gotta figure out which direction I have to go to loosen that. When you're putting these back together, you're gonna have to adjust this to where that parking brake just starts to drag. Let me make sure my camera's running. Okay. Live and learn, right? Now I know where they're located. Let me get a quick peek in here again to make sure I'm on that. So if you don't see it where your holes are, put that adjuster, that uh, retainer screw back in. Cranking it with my screwdriver, pushing it downward, see if it's loosening or tightening. All right, that might have tightened it. I'll try going the other way. Turning it in an upward position now. I believe that might be the right way. about as far as that's gonna go in that position. It looks like I gotta go the other way. Oh, I'm stupid. I got my retainer screw still in there, duh. I'm sorry guys, I'm human, I make mistakes. Line that back up on here in case it doesn't come off this way. All right, I'm pulling on it. And I got that retainer screw, and it's definitely not going to come off with that on there. I don't feel well. I just got over one hell of a bug that's had me screwed up for damn near two weeks. Still feeling off. I feel like I'm running a low grade fever. I'm wondering if I got a sinus infection and I need to get a uh, antibiotics. There we go. All right, so you have to spin it upward to get that rotor off. He's still got a little life on him. I very rarely use the parking brake. The only reason I need that is for an emergency stop or get inspected. So I'm gonna get a uh, doco disc and clean the surface up. If you don't have this set, it's a good set to get. Let me go get it and show it to you. This is that two inch quick change surface conditioning disc by doca disc by doca zoo. I believe I got this on Amazon. I think there's three or four different grits in here and it comes with a nice little uh, adapter. Optimum thing to use would be an air grinder, pneumatic, because it's very high RPM. Clean that up real nice real quick, but I'm not dragging my compressor out just for this, so I'm going to throw it on my drill. Better than nothing. You don't want to leave debris built up behind your rotors there and make them run out of true. Believe me, even just a thousandth or a couple of thousandths of an inch will make that rotor wobble and you'll get pulsating brakes. Uh, 3M makes a nice little hub resurfacing tool if you have regular standard uh, studs coming out for your lug nuts. It's a, a little hollow piece with a abrasive ring that goes right around and cleans the hub up really nicely. This is working nice. I saw this guy, uh, Eric O from South Main Auto, using these all the time, and I didn't know what the hell they were called. I was trying to find them for months. Then I finally ran across them.
Let me make sure I am recording here. Am I recording, guys? Yes, I'm recording. I'm sorry, I'm not a video videogra videography expert. I'll try not to kill you guys with a bunch of wasted air time of me running back and forth to stuff, but other people have written me, they said they want details and all this other stuff, so I just figured I'd just start filming me do the whole job. I'm gonna get some brake clean. I'll take you with me for a second. I got my shelf of goodies here. Ta-da! I don't have the music. Sorry. If you ever watch South Main Auto, you get the joke. Clean those parking up too while I'm in here. That looks nice. Okay. Now it's the opposite to wrap this up. These don't have any kind of oil on them or anything. Some of them come oiled. You gotta get that off because that'll get into your pads. We get lined up for that star adjuster. Now I believe I gotta crank it down. Let me take this off so I can see as well how I am moving this. cranking it down now to open it okay so you got to be going down with your screwdriver to tighten it up now that's just rust I'm not oily I think I said down right Try to be easy with this. You can start tearing this up, this star adjuster, if you don't get on it right. Just I don't like to beat stuff up, you know. I'm gonna have to put that screw in here and do it through one of the lug holes so I can rotate this and feel. too much you just 
barely want that touching. I don't want to go too tight and wear your shoes out and heat your rotors up for nothing. They're just touching there. I'm gonna back it off one crank, see how that feels. That's it right there. All right, that's done. Now we gotta get our shoes in. I've seen people use this. This is the first time I'm using it. It looks like good stuff. I used to use other uh, silicone based. I used to use the uh, silicone based brake parts lubricant do not use white lithium grease it is not good on disc brakes it cannot withstand the heat uh, you can put this on the back of the piston and at the contact points where the pads will mount on the uh, caliper okay I'm actually gonna put it on the back of the pad when I slide it in. I may reach in there and put a little bit on the bottom of the piston. I just don't wanna get it on my rotor at all. guys can see back here it's a little tight only reference I could find with the torque for this one page said 85 foot pounds you'd snap these bolts off that can't be correct so I believe the 35 newton meters are 28.6 pounds Sounds more appropriate for this size bolt. I'm just gonna go by feel. I'm not recommending that you do that on your car. I'm just showing you how I'm doing it on mine. If I was doing this on somebody else's car, I'd probably do it by torque spec. I like to follow the rules, but today I'm gonna cheat a little bit because it's my car, and I can do that. I've gotten used to this ratchet and actually torque stuff after I've tightened it just to make sure I'm close in the ballpark. So I'm kind of getting accustomed to the feel of this one. See, these are sliding right in there. The other ones must have swelled up with corrosion. Going a little snug. I'm actually going to clean this up on a disc real quick and give it a shot of paint I'll be right back all I did was clean that up a little bit on a sanding wheel and I hit it with a shot of rust-oleum paint I don't want my brakes being locked on there 
I wanted to be able to back off of the uh, rotor when I lit off of the brake. It's a little better. Okay, my hardware. Little diddle with two pieces with this. Drive those in a little bit from the back side. getting down under here will be easier I can see what the hell I'm doing oh I didn't catch my brake hardware on the other side it's gonna come back out make sure you get the hardware under that pin you almost missed that I'm gonna take a peek at the other side. That doesn't look like it's lining up right to me. Okay, first time I put that in upside down, I believe. Goes this way with the big dips under the pins. Then it's under spring load. Now it's actually pushing that pad in. Before it wasn't pushing the pad in. Now it's actually doing something. down too far. Yep.
seat it now. Got to make sure you seat your pins in there right. See how they're coming through this side, you should see them pop out of this side. I want to seat them in there. Make sure they're retained, they're tapered. Give them a couple of shots in with a little punch or a big nail, and then they'll stay locked in. Okay, guys, that's the left rear. That was the one that wasn't in bad shape. Feels good. Parking brake just touching a little bit. I'm happy. Off to the other side. I'm gonna go take a little break, guys, and vape. Have a couple of glasses of cold water, and I'll be back. Okay, I'm gonna get started on the right rear now. I thought that these had sensors on each brake, but it looks like they only have it on one side, at least on the rear anyway. I didn't see any place for a brake sensor to go on the other side. There was nothing there when I disassembled it, but this one has one, so. Messing with that is a first for me. So we're both going to learn as we go along on this one. Uh, I'm going to see if I can open this caliper up a little bit, which I'm not too hopeful for. The last one was pretty frozen up. Might be spreading a little bit. Prying it both ways, trying to push this way to pull it this way to get the rear caliber depressed and I'm gonna push it this way trying to suck this caliper in this caliper piston I'm hard trying to get a bite in here let me try putting another screwdriver back here Might be working. I'm resting on this little ledge here. I don't know if you guys can see that with the other screwdriver, and then I'm getting down in here with my little pry tool. I'm trying to get the perch up against that and pull to depress that rear piston. Let's see if that did anything. I got one hell of a lip on this rotor. That's one thing these Mercedes do, the way they have the pads built. You always wind up with a little lip around there. This is not going to make a rotor bad. Uh, I've heard people, oh, you need the rotor replaced. As long as you don't have warpage in the rotor where you're getting pulsing brakes and like ridiculously grooved, the rotor doesn't have to be pretty. As long as your brakes are smooth and it's not worn down to a specified thickness, you're fine. But, uh... I'd be surprised if anybody ran their rotors to where they wear down before they would get so bad that they're warped out and you need to change them. In the back here again, we got the two 16 millimeter bolts. I already cracked these loose before. I'm trying not to waste your guys' time with a bunch of dead video time, but... Like I said, other people have asked me to show more details, so that's why I'm doing more filming as I go along.
my cheapest ratchets I got craftsmen's but I love these long handle Pittsburgh's I just love them lifetime warranty they're good enough for me I call Pittsburgh tools my throwaway tools but uh like these got a lifetime warranty on them you break it you just go there I'll give you another one can't complain about that with the price definitely they're definitely worth what I paid for them less than 20 bucks I gotta go get my hanger to put on my spring so I don't leave that caliper hanging on that brake line <clears throat> and where the hell did my hanger go now how did that disappear on me I had a coat hanger here Remarkable. That's amazing. That's incredible. I don't know where that went. Let me go get something else. Okay, I found my coat hanger. Did a disappearing act on me. Shit, did I hit that boot? Be careful of the rubber boot on the piston on your caliper. I hope I didn't just tear that boot. I got stupid here for a second. Wasn't paying attention. I think I nicked that boot. No good. L learn from me. Don't do that. I want to get this done. Don't rush. Oh my god, look at that. No wonder this is breaking horribly. What the hell is going on there? Look at that pad. Jeez. This piston's probably frozen. That doesn't look good at all. I gotta see how this center comes off. Oh, that just clips in there? That's all it is? Plugs in there and clips on to the inner brake shoe. That's what those, I was wondering what those little notches were in those brake pads. Now I know what that little notch is. It's for the brake wear sensor. What happens is when the sensor, when the brake pad gets so low, it hits the uh, rotor and either closes a circuit or opens a circuit, one or the other, probably closes a circuit. Oh, there's actually a little hole within the pad itself. Huh, interesting. I've never seen one of these before. I've worked on a lot of cars, but they didn't have brake wear sensors on them. Things are always changing. Yeah, these pistons are really, really don't want to back out. That's not good. I got to try to get these to move back. have a ratcheting tool on the way in the mail for spreading these apart. I wish I had that here today. I could really use that. All right, I'm going to have to disconnect this. I'm figuring that's probably another five mil, I hope. Let me see if it's is it a torque or an Allen. Looks like an Allen. Maybe it's a five mil. I bring that over here with me. It's 
more than a five mil. It's five mil, it's just corroded. Tap that in there, so tap it in so I don't strip that out. That's nice. Now I need an extension to get to that socket. I'll be right back. Hope I'm getting this on footage. This camera was flaking out on me. I was gonna send it back to GoPro. Ever since it's new, I've been having trouble trying to record in 4K or 60 frames a second. I had to do 780 at 30 frames a second, and that shouldn't be the case, a brand new camera. But I bought another SD card and tested it in the house, recording for quite a while, and it did it without a problem. All right, I gotta give this a few shots. This is on there. I don't wanna hit that. Yeah, you heard a different tune. That's when it broke free. I nicked that a little bit with the hammer. I don't think that's a big catastrophe, but... Oh, look at the inside of this rotor. No wonder my brakes were horrible when I was hitting them. Yeah, big scales came off of it. Gonna have much improved braking when I get this thing off of here. Look at that. Horrible, horrible. If your rotors look like that, it's definitely time to change them. <coughs> Ta -da! Play it, Eric. Bits and bobs here. Promotional for Hella Pajid pad uh, rotors. Hella Pajid, they look excellent. We're gonna try these out, but I think this is gonna be my new brand to go to for brakes. They just look like a higher quality than what I've been getting. The castings look really nice. They've been machined very nicely. They see they're high, high carbon. So these and the ceramic pads should be a good mix. We'll see how it goes. All right, where's my little Tana? Make sure you got your hole lined up for your star adjuster. Get your little retainer bolt back in there. Oh, I almost forgot. I got to clean up this face of this hub. Almost forgot about that. I bought this tool just for that, and I might as well use it, right? Clean any residue of grease off of here. Here we go. This thing has been working beautiful. I like it. I actually put a, should have put some nevices behind these. That's what I should have did. All 
Okay, I gotta go get another battery, guys. I'll be back. This camera is glitching out on me. I hope I'm getting this footage on here. I have stuff from this camera, but I, it's really not getting into where I'm working, you know? I try to do videos that'll help people out with some information. And I hope I'm working at my goal here. went way too deep. He's got a lot of spring tension on him. I guess that's a good thing. get in here I should have put this brake sensor thing on here last that's what I'm gonna have to do I'm gonna come back off out of my way so I'll put this on last after you get your pins in that way you can tap that brake pin through there this is just gonna get in your way okay get that up out of the way Hindsight's 2020, man. Here we go. We're in business. All right, now I'm gonna seat those nice and firm in there with my punch. Just see them come out of the front side. Tap those until they feel them bottom out. You should see it. That nipple come out on there on the other side because it's got that little split ring on there. That's a retainer. You want to make sure you sink this all the way in this hole. Or else the pin may come out on you. And you wouldn't want your brakes coming apart while you're driving around.
There we go. She's in there now. Okay. New brake wear sensor. Put it in the pad. Clip it on the shoe on the pad. Retaining slot there. And then hook it back up. I want to thank all you guys for watching. I would really appreciate it if you guys give a like and subscribe. Help our channel grow here. And I will keep trying to bring some useful information to you guys. I want to help people out out there. I get so sick of hearing people getting ripped off by these unscrupulous garages. It makes me sick. So I try to help anybody out there who owns their car. Whether they do their own work or they got to go get some work done. The more informed they are the better prepared they'll be to protect themselves from getting ripped off by some prick. You can see me on, uh, you can find me on Gmail. I'll post that in the beginning and the end of the video. Paul Phillips Fix. I'm also on Facebook and uh, Patreon. I have to talk to friends and family members to start becoming patreons to support my site i would love it if this thing grew into something where i could have the opportunity to build get a car and fix it up to donate it to somebody for charity or something like that that'd be great you know right now i got a friend of mine who's dying from cancer he can't drive anymore i'm gonna help him sell his car i'll give it a once over make sure everything's in order anything that's been taken care of i'll let them prospective buyers know about it anything that needs to be done I will let them know I am not into ripping people off I don't get down like that so all right guys that's how you do brakes on a uh all right guys that's how you do brakes on a w210 chassis uh when you put your lugs in do a star pattern when you're tightening them tighten them to 85 foot pounds okay okay have a good day guys Thanks again for watching, and uh, remember, take good care of your cars. They'll take good care of you. And I'm going to do a video next on flushing the brake system out and uh, putting bre fresh brake cleaner in and uh, brake fluid in and uh, the proper way to bleed it. There's a sequence you should go through. Uh, the first caliber that you'll bleed will be the caliber that is farthest away from the master cylinder. So... On a left-hand side drive car, it would be the right rear. Then you do the left rear, then the right front, and then the left front. And you can flush the whole system out. So you gotta add a little fluid while you're going through that process because it takes quite a bit to fill all those lines up and get all that old crap out. Brake fluid is very hydroscopic. That means it absorbs moisture and it'll suck moisture right out of the air and it'll, uh rot your brake lines from the inside out and also if you ever have to do some really aggressive braking and you heat your brakes up that moisture will turn to steam and cause an air pocket in your brakes and you'll lose a firm pedal and you'll have a pedal of mush okay guys take good care of your cars and take good care of yourselves bye bye thanks again bye see you soon I figured I'd film this so you guys could see this little hanger pin that I was talking about. Thread it in the top lug hole. Put it in any one. I like putting it in the top. You don't even have to tighten it all the way in. Makes it so much easier to put a tire on. I always hand thread my lugs in first 
because you do not want to cross thread one of these which you can do if you try putting them in right away with an impact gun bad news don't want that to happen so get a few threads in there by hand I will just lightly snug these with the impact then I'll drop the car down and talk them to earth 85 foot pounds each do not have to go crazy with the design of these lugs they don't need 120 pounds or 110 pounds 85 is what they call for I don't go crazy with any of my lugs and I've never had a tire come loose on me nor do I rub my rotors out so, follow the torque specs they're there for a reason see how quick that was with that pin Oh, it would help if I put a battery on this. I had to switch out batteries. Battery on my drill died. Does it work good without any electricity? No, it doesn't. Do much of anything. Tighten them in a crisscross pattern. As soon as that hits, goes to impact, I stop. Do the rest with my torque wrench. These rotors were so damn big, I thought they sent me the wrong thing for this car. Mercedes didn't play with their brakes. I like that it's got the vented rears on it. I love the way this car drives and stops. I'm very happy with the W210 series Mercedes. I'm in love with them. Some people think they're ugly. I love the 124s too. But this is what I got. And I'm happy with what I got. I got these two guys. I baby that one during the winter. I try to keep it off the road so the salt doesn't eat it up. It's got no rust on it at all. It was a Florida car. It looked like they never even drove it in the rain. This one is got starting to get rust on the wings or the fenders, whatever you want to call them. I talked to a lot of people over in Great Britain, in the UK, and they call them wings. So I used to watch Wheeler Dealer too. <laughs> I like top gear. I get a kick out of the old top gear. Their newer show now that Grand Tour is not as good as the old top gear where something's missing. A few of the episodes this season have gotten a little better, but I don't know. I guess they're just doing to make money now. How much can they do, right? We're out of material after a while. A lot of times I put never sees on my lugs but I'll have these off again be doing some more work on this car so not worried that they're gonna be on there so long that they're gonna get frozen on there I love that little hanger pin don't want to come out now okay let me go get my torque wrench various bushings, the sway bar bushing, control arm linkages, Let's see if anything looks horribly worn, 
good time to take a peek while you're down here all right let me get a screwdriver and see if i could open this up a little bit i may have to get a pry tool just trying to pull this caliber any way i can I bought a uh, caliber spreading tool. It ratchets. It's not the ones that clamp on the sliding calibers that wouldn't work on this. The one I have has two pads on it that close up. You remove the caliber, put it inside and ratchet it and they spread. I haven't gotten that in the mail yet, but it looks like I'm gonna try. Uh, hopefully I can get this off. I probably can't get this off until I spread that because I got quite a lip on my uh, rotor here. Let me go get my uh, little pry uh, bar, it's like a screwdriver, and see if I can get that in there and move these back a little bit. All right, this is a five millimeter Allen. I gotta go get that tool to get that out. I don't know the torque value on those. You don't have to go crazy with them. You just snug them up. Uh, if you don't have the hanger bolt for putting these wheels back on, get yourself one. They're like eight bucks or 10 bucks or something on eBay. It's called Mercedes wheel hanger bolt. You just thread that in there, then drop your wheel on that, put a couple of the lugs in and then unscrew that and go ahead and put your wheel back on. Makes it a lot easier than trying to balance that uh, tire up there and rim and get it lined up one of the lug holes. Let me go get that tool. 